Hi everyone, and welcome to part 2 of my fresh start, normal mode file. Let's get this save build ready as quickly as possible. I'll be using glitches and other tricks to get me there. Again, this is me working through the story until I get to the point I can accelerate the whole process. I'm going to get some carbon, can't help myself, shoot everything! Base complete, story progresses. Cool. Access log, construction, largely a success. Recovered, salvage data from nearby, plans logs, and indicate additional subterranean devices. Begin search, track plans. Let's get refining. Another milestone accomplished, yeah. Let's look for some salvage technology modules. I'll have to find quite a few of them throughout the game, or not. Base teleporter and a dreaded biofuel reactor. What a useless piece of wood. Mustn't forget to set those boxes. Access log from previous years. Wait a minute, this really is second hand goods. Base computer archive has reached their end. It seems there is nothing more I will learn from them. My predecessor appears to have left their base and headed to the space station. Well, that's me off to the space station. The first thing I'll do when I get there, change my appearance. Okay, should I go anomaly again? I was anomaly last time, so let's go for something different. Let's think, what should I go? Yeah, nah. None of them. Come on, Gek? Yes. Let's go Gek. <laughs> yeah, someone will love me being a Gek. Look at that. Oh, they're all so lovely. Little Geks. Nah, Kovacs. Let's be one of those fancy little flashy light people. Yep, that looks good. Nice and blue. Pick up a backpack. Upgrade. And of course all the shinies around the space station. Alien, large and intimidating, seems to be attempting to be friendly. Perhaps they know the one who came before me. The alien draws back startled. The look on their face tells me our conversation is over. Let's go find someone else to talk to then. The alien's elegant metal shell springs to life as I approach. 
they study me, lights flashing around my visor. Perhaps they know something about the message left at the base computer. Ask about 16 then. A glazed look passes over the life form's visor. The number has had some strange effect on them. They seem reluctant to speak further. Hmm. Okay then, I'll try you. Despite their size, the alien does not seem aggressive, but when I blink, I see the same red light that stared at me at the distress beacon. Repeat, 16. We are watching you, traveler friend. Find what we have left you. Though the alien speaks, the words are not their own. A string of code is echoed back to me through the red glare. Log directly to my exosuit. The crimson light fades away and I see the life form glaring back at me. Whatever has happened, they do not appear to have witnessed it. I should leave. Perhaps my base computer would be able to make sense of this code. Okay, back to the base. Begin decryption. The traveller finds their wings, fly to us and claim your place amongst the stars. This was not meant to be a law through. Or what should it be? Rod stumbles through the law. Through. <laughs> The signal led me to the wreck of a freighter. Colossal fragments of metal scattered across the landscape. Where are these messages? Nothing but misfired circuits, a long forgotten ruin. Nestled amongst the debris, find the pilot's log, blinking, awaiting input. Instead of displaying the ship's log, the terminal spits out a strange sequence of numbers. They are followed by a short message. The anomaly. Come to the stars. Take flight. The schematic for the hyperdrive is attached to the end of the message. Okay, I'll take the blueprint. I'll pull the blueprint from the computer. But this hyperdrive blueprint is for a conventional starship. Not a freighter of this size. Hyperdrive module. Chromatic metal and microprocessors. Not a problem. Always got to pick up that salvage tech when you see it. I ain't got to mine some more copper. Made fast work of that. Of course, convert it to chromatic metal. While waiting for the refiner, let's go and find more salvage tech. I have to head back to space station to pick up some microprocessors, which I should have done earlier, but you know. Let's install this sucker. Hyperdrive is complete. Perhaps a really well finance is out there amongst the stars. But without warp cells, I will be going nowhere. I need to find a soul for the antimatter. Off to the planet to get the antimatter recipe.
Right, let's take that blueprint and read the log. 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16. Okay, let's build this warp cell and do our first warp. Yes. Let's touch a few butts. I mean, all these stones. This structure is unlike anything I've encountered in my journey so far. Everything about it is so obviously alien, so obviously out of place. As I stare at it, words form themselves in my mind, a strange fragment of broken speech. Is it traveller? Is it friend? It feels strange responding to questions I am unsure I am being asked. But something has clearly taken notice of my reply. I am overwhelmed by a sense of something has awoken. That someone is watching me. It forms another question. Is it first? Is it last? I don't know how I'm being spoken to. This monolith is ancient, and I cannot escape the feeling it's asked these questions many times over. Have they seen the Crimson Eye? Has the Crimson Eye seen them? Likelihood of anomaly exceeding safety parameters. Breach detected. Alert, alert. The boundaries fall. The walls collapse. Your universe awaits. Find us, traveler. Incoming transmission, source unknown. Please identify yourself, I'm... You left me, why did you? Of course you'd say that, of course you'd, just like the others. There's no reply, the communication falls silent, though the channel remains open. Well, I think that's enough for this episode. Next one of probably doing a lot more glitches, tricks, a little bit of help from friends. Sounds like a song. Oh well. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, hit that like and subscribe button. Oh, and the bell thingy. And of course, thank you for watching. See you all later.